What's going on, everybody? What am I saying? I got my Sailor Moon throw on. I'm trying to see who is that out there in that truck. Don't come over here. You don't call. I will, I was. I look. I would look. You pull up in this at this door. I would shut that door in your face and act like I ain't see. You. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, yes, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm like an old Baptist woman today with my little Sailor Moon throw. I'm just kind of comfortable right now. You know, it's Sunday. A lot of us got to go back to work after the Thanksgiving holiday, which I'm not looking forward to it. Um, I was kind of in my feelings about it. And I thought about it like everybody I know pretty much have to go back to work. Like we all wish that we had $2 million or something in the bank until we didn't have to work. But um, I'm in the middle of trying to find another job as well. So just pray for me, y'all out there. I really do. I really normally I don't try to like... Um, you know, I, normally I'm the type of person like I really try to be there for the support and feelings of other people and not ask for anything in return. But child, pray for me, child. Pray. There's this job at the library that I want and that I think I'm a great fit for, but I haven't heard back from them yet. And even though there's somebody I know who works within the library system, offer to give a good word of my name and my resume to the HR department, you know, still haven't heard anything, which is, you know, if it's not meant for me, it's not meant for me, but child, I'm ready to move on. I love what I do now, but I'm ready to move on because um, it's just too much. Um, but with that being said, I'm so grateful that I at least got a job, you know, you know, just to cut, keep the cable running and keep the lights on, which in a matter of fact, I was just doing some work on my laptop related to work you know i'm always on top of my stuff and um i said let me try to connect with the people here for a minute while i'm washing clothes and it's starting to get dark early look my dryer just went off um and share what it is that how reading was going for me in the month of november because it's been going great i love the month of november okay um you know, I was looking forward to a lot of new releases to come out this month, and I liked every single one of them that I've read so far. Um, so with that being said, the first one that I mentioned in another video was I was looking forward to reading Kristen Britton's The Spirit of the Wood. It's a penultimate uh, release to her Green Rider series, although what it is, it's just much more of a short novella that scopes and deeply on the on a character named Captain Mapstone, who is a Green Rider, who is becoming a lieutenant. Now, this is going to be difficult for me to get into because you really have to understand that this fantasy series is about seven books deep. So nobody who has not read these books are not going to know what I'm talking about as I speak about it from this point of view, this point on this camera. But I don't know what else to say other than to just say that this is part of my reading journey. I read The Spirit of the Wood and I actually enjoyed it. Now, I was a little wary because Kristen Britton as a fantasy writer, as I expressed before, she's one of those fantasy writers like Mercedes Lackey to me that is very good at character and storytelling, but not necessarily good at maintaining a solid plot. You know, point A, point B, you know, from C, pacing, you know, what you begin, what the story began as is transformative to something new at the end. I mean, we could get into details about that some other time, but she's, I don't find she is, like, I find that she's one of those um, fantasy writers that kind of just plots alone and go wherever the feeling goes, even if, you know, some other direction she takes her characters don't. It's like, it's, it, it reads like, this is an idea that I just want to put into this book, although it has nothing to do with the bigger overarching um, situation that the characters are going through. So it was nice for her to release a novella where it's less than 200 pages and it's centered around one main character within the series, which is a character known as Captain Mapstone. Captain Mapstone is one of the few characters who I absolutely, absolutely adore within the Green Rider series. A lot of them get on my nerves, but I do enjoy the series in general because of the fantasy elements and adventure elements. But having this moment to look into the history of Captain Mapstone was both fulfilling and not so much. And what I say by not so much is that the story actually did not 
really center around her. Um, the Spirit of the Wood mostly centered around, centered around a green rider in training named Tavin, who basically, you know, Captain Mapstone and him were attacked. She was injured for the first half and some change of the book. She was completely in a feverish, almost semi comatose state as he slowly gathered some of the entities within the woods. You know, we're talking a fantasy to um, cure her, to uh, treat her, cure her, you know, pull her out of this convalescence of injury that she's in, you know, all while stuck in this cabin within the woods. Now, with that being said, although that character Tavin really was the center of the story. It did look at Captain Mapstone's past as it's been referenced in the Green Rider series itself. On top of that, there was a lot of nuggets toward the end that sort of foreshadowed what was to come in the final book within the series. But ultimately, I loved the Green. I loved um, Spirit of the Wood because there was this very rustic. Um, fairy tale quality tone to Britain's storytelling and I liked that it was a condensed form of that as opposed to her big gigantic epic fantasy books that are about this thick it was very condensed there was a lot of brevity to it but it still had that ability to capture my imagination as a reader you know indulging within this fantasy book following this character named Tavin who adjacently is an interesting character given that one of his talents is that of empathy you know he's an empathetic character but it also blossoms as a form of an, an ability because each green rider has an ability like captain mapstone can tell when people lie the main protagonist of the, of the series kerrigan can turn invisible so in tavin's case he feels the emotions of other individuals other, other individuals, but he can also weaponize those emotions, which means that he can absorb them and shoot them back or, you know, shoot back to some of our nefarious characters, the, um, the painfulness that they put and trauma they put some of their victims through so that they can feel it. And that ultimately leads these characters to unalive in themselves. So he really wrestled with that within this book. And I'm reading this book like here he is, this green rider trainee going trudging through these woods, trying to gather a lot of the mystical um, uh, entities like the man of the wood or the spirit of the wood itself. Um, you know, his connection with certain animals. It's just, it's just like really pure fairy airy tale quality writing um, but him struggling to stay in connection with that quiet space of the woods as opposed to being riveted by his ability when it comes when he comes into contact with people with the the much more darker bitter grittier side of human nature as an empath you know taking those things on so that was nice and you know it didn't exactly end on the best note for him but I still enjoyed that time spent with that character. Like I said, mostly from the sheer tone of the airy fairy tale quality of the writing within itself and that dilemma that Britain put her character Tavin through as an empath. So it was really good. And then of course the extra icing on the cake was the bit of, like I said, foreshadowing into what is upcoming in the final book within the series. So the Spirit of the Wood was a was a nice break. It was a nice piece of beef jerky to dig one's teeth into with all its fairy tale rustic tones, which really highlighted why I love Britain's writing, despite her ability to plot is kind of janky at times. But it, it really do boil down to Britain is one of those writers who really can engage with that sensory for me as someone who craves fantasies, that sensory of, of wanderlust and eagerness to go on these adventures through, tra you know, tramping through woods and running into trouble, you know, whether it's trolls or what, what have you, you know what I'm saying? Like she really 
It's one of those authors that get me engaged with just that atmosphere when it comes to reading her books. The plots are a struggle, but that part is always good to me. And it just was so incredibly illuminating and almost reassuring, actually, about what's to come when I took on The Spirit of the Wood. So that was a good book. I enjoyed The Spirit of the Wood. I cannot wait to read the final book within the series. I'm hoping that it's not like a 500 or 600 page tome filled with just branching thoughts. Let's address this, even though it has nothing to do with this and does, you know. Uh. And then, of course, one of the things is the Mary Sue Kerrigan as a character is a complete Mary Sue for, Chris, for the author. You know, she's, one, she's the main protagonist and she gets all the good stuff, you know. <sighs> but anyway, I still like Kerrigan. But, um. Yeah, that's it. So I think I'm going to stop this video here and go on to the next book. So The Spirit of the Wood by Kristen Britton was a great book for me. I loved it. Loved it. Definitely loved the the tone of it. The tone of anything I loved. And then, of course, the mood it generated where I felt so much warmth in her uh, world building again. So let's, let's move on.